Welcome to a video presentation of Chapter 7, Section 3 and Chapter 7, Section 7, entitled Word Problems Involving Percentages. Now, what the book tries to do with this section, these two sections, 7, 3 and 7, 7, is they try and get you to remember different proportion for every different type of problem. So this type of problem, you've got to remember how to do this. If it's this type of problem, you've got to remember how to do this one, which is different from the first one. If you've got this type of problem, then you've got to do this, which is different from this. It's way too much to remember. So instead of trying to remember a bunch of proportions, which you're not going to remember in the first place, it's easier for us to just teach it to you one way using a translation. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So you can see we only have one definition over there, a definition of a percent, a ratio whose denominator is 100. A ratio whose denominator is 100. So the literal translation from the, I guess the Latin is per 100. All right. Now, in order to be successful here, you have to remember the meanings of words in story problems or word problems. You have to remember that the word of means to multiply. You have to remember that the word is means equals. Those two things we've already covered this year, so you should remember that. And when you see what in the statement, now it'll either say what number, what percent, depends on the problem. That's where you're going to drop your variable. Again, of multiply is equals what, either what number, what percent is your variable. All you're going to do is you're going to go through the word problem, translate it out, meaning translate out each part, change it to the symbol or the number, and then you'll have an equation you'll solve, and you'll just solve the resulting equation. Okay, so these are actually pretty easy problems in terms of that. Okay, you just have to make sure you get the translation right. All right, so let's go into the examples. All right, example one. 126 is what percent of 150? So as I said, the first thing you want to do is you're just going to go through and translate everything. Everything's going to come out of this statement of something. 126 just translates as 126. The next thing we see in the statement is the word is. Well, is from what we wrote over there means equal. So is it's going to change into an equal sign. The next thing I have in that statement says, what percent? Well, as I said down there, the what, well, you said what number, what percent, is going to translate out as your variable. So here's where I'm going to drop my variable in. You can pick whatever variable you want. I'm going to choose x. The next thing says of. Of, as you see over there, is where you're going to drop a time sign in. And then 150 translates as 150. So you can see I'm solving 126 equals x times 150. So that's not a big deal. That's a very basic equation. It's a multiplication equation, so you know you have to solve it by dividing. And the number that's on the side of the variable is 150, so I have to divide by 150. So I'm just dividing across by 150. that division and you get 0.84 if I'm not mistaken. Yes, 0.84. And you're almost done. That is the correct number, but it's not the correct answer. And the reason I say it's not the correct answer is because if we look back at the original problem, the original problem wants to know what percent, meaning the answer I'm coming up with is going to have to be a percent. So I'm going to have to just simply now change 0.84 into a percent. In case you've forgotten to change a decimal to a percent, you move the decimal two times to the right and slap the percentage sign on it. So I'm just going to take this answer, move it twice to the right, and add a percent sign for 84 percent. And again, we only do that if the problem says what percent. If it says what number, let it be. But if it says what percent, you've got to change it into a percentage for an answer. Okay, let's try example two, a very similar problem, very similar. 84 is what percent of 70? 
84 is what percent of 7? Okay, so let's go through and translate this one. Okay, 84. 84 is going to translate as what? 84. Is comes out as what? Equal. An equal sign. The next thing we run into is our what? And that's going to come out as the variable. We can use whatever variable we want, but why we create it. Stick with x. Then I've got of. Of's coming out as multiplication or time sign. And you can see I'm using the dot there. If you want to use x for multiplication, I don't know why you would. But if you want to, just make sure you don't use x as your variable. And then we got 70. That's going to translate as 70. So we've got 84 equals x times 70. So now I just have to solve the equation. I'm going to divide across by 70. And 84 divided by 70 is 1.2. Just like the last problem, this one says what percent? So to finish it, I have to change it into a percent. Again, twice to the right and add a percent sign. So this is going to be the what thing right away. What number is that's where we're going to drop our variable in. X. Is is next. Is comes out as an equal sign. Half a percent. Now you've got a choice here. Yes, unless you're doing calculators. If your calculator has a percent sign, you could just leave that as 0.5%. Doesn't have a percent sign, then you're probably going to want to go ahead and change it to a decimal here. We're reversing what we did in the last two examples, so to the left and drop the percent sign. So that becomes 0 0.005. Again, your calculator has a percent sign, you can just leave it 0 0.5 percent. That doesn't bother. Well, let me take that back. If it has a percent sign and you know how to use it. Of, of is your time sign, 65 is 65. So you can see this one, I don't even have to solve an equation because the two numbers are together. I just have to multiply 0.005 and 65, and that's going to give me 0.325. And you can see in this one, this one even says what number so I don't even have to change it. I'm done. 0.325 is it. 